Today I will be teaching multiplication of fractions. Hi, my name is Daniel and I'm with the task team. I'll be trying to teach you math, specifically multiplying with fractions. I know I'm not your teacher at school, but this was a topic I learned myself not that long ago and I can teach it to you during a time when it's hard to learn other things already. Let's get started. So what is a fraction? You might be different, but after school closed, I forgot some things I learned in school. So let's just go over what a fraction is again, but I'm sure you already know. A fraction is a part of something that can be bigger or smaller, but it's not a whole number. Let's look at a ruler. As you can see, all the little numbers between the big, the bigger numbers have slashes in them, and those indicate that they're a part of something. So they're smaller than the actual whole numbers. Now, all those numbers that have a slash are called fractions because they're in between the two big numbers, the whole numbers. So some of the terms we'll use in this video are a fraction, a part of a number that is not a whole number and usually has a slash. The numerator is the top number of the fraction. The denominator is the bottom number of the fraction. Least common denominator is the lowest number where two denominators are multiples and a multiple is a number you can divide by another number. If you're not sure on any of these, I'll go over them in the rest of the video. So to start us off, we need to know how to add and subtract from fractions first. Let's do a question together. If we have one half plus one half plus one half, what does that give us? Well, we use solution. Since these fractions already have a least common denominator, which is basically a super long word just to say the bottom of the number is the same, we don't have to worry about changing anything about them. So we add up the top number, the numerator, and leave the bottom the same. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3 on the top, and the 2 stays the same on the bottom. So our answer is 3 over 2. You can also say 1 and 1 half or 1.5. It's all the same number in different forms. Let's try a subtraction question. If we have one third minus one third minus one half, what does that give us? Well, this time we use subtraction. Now we don't have a least common denominator. That word is too long. Let's call it a LCD so we don't hurt our brains. So we have to change the fractions so we can easily subtract them. The LCD in this case is six because six is the smallest number where both two and three can be divided. The way I got it is I did three times, three times two, which got me six. But this doesn't work every time because the rule is that the smallest number that all your denominators can divide from. So if I have a denominator that is 3, 2, and 4, I can't do 6 because 4 doesn't divide perfectly from 6. So 1 third is the same as 2 over 6 and 1 half is the same as 3 over 6. So 2 over 6 minus 2 over 6 minus 3 over 6 gives us negative 3 over 6. We have 2 minus 2 minus 3 all over 6, and our answer will be negative 1 half. Remember that LCD that we spent so much time going over? You don't have to do that anymore for multiplication. So in one way, this might be easier for you. As you know, multiplication is repeated addition. That means that 1 half times 3 is the same thing as 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half. Since we already know that this is 3 over 2, does that mean 1 half times 3 is also 3 over 2? Absolutely. Now let's focus on the equation 1 half times 3 equals 3 over 2. Do you see something? I'll show you. 3 multiplies with the 1 in 1 half and a 2 in 1 half stayed the same on the bottom. Weird, right? Maybe not. Let's do another. What is 17 times 1 third? As you can see here, we separated the top and the bottom. So we have 17 times 1 at the top, which is 17, and 3 is the same on the bottom. So we can do 17 times 1 third equals 17 over 6 because we have the numerator over the denominator. That's the rule, simple as that. If you have any number multiplied by a fraction, you regularly multiply the non-fraction with the top number of the fraction. You can leave the bottom one the same. You can see on your worksheet that I made four questions you can do for practice. You can pause the video now to do them. I'm sure that after you do these questions, you'll be completely ready to tackle along what's next. After you've done them, you can move on and room zoom the video. You can pause here. Here are the answers. I hope you did these questions. You can pause the video here again if you want to check your work. Does it get harder? If that was hard, I completely understand, and I hope these questions helped you make it easier. But to answer this question, yes, it does get harder. How so? We just did multiplying a fraction by a whole number. What if we multiply a fraction by a fraction? Is that even possible? To get a part of a part? It is. I'm here to show you that it's not that much harder, and it might be even easier for you. So, a similar rule applies when we multiply fractions by fractions. Before, we did 3 times 1 half, and we got 3 over 2. Let's think of this differently. 
Three is the same as three over one because we have three parts in one group. Now we have three over one times one half, but we still get three over two. But how? The rule is we multiply the numerators of the fractions together and we multiply the denominators of the fractions together. So when we have three over one times one half, the three multiplies with the one in one half, which gets us three, and the one from the three over one multiplies with the two and the one half, which is two. Our answer will then be three over two as we put the numerator over the denominator. Let's try another one. This one's a little more tricky. One half times four fifths times five sixths. So if we multiply the numerators and denominators together separately, we have one times four times five in the numerator and two times five times six in the denominator. When we multiply all those together separately, we get 20 over 60. And then if we divide it by 10 over 10, which is the same as one, we get the same answer as one over three. That is our final answer. Let's do one more. What is five and one fourth feet in inches? Remember there are there are twelve inches in a foot. This is important for this question. Since we know that we can since we know that we can do five times twelve plus one fourth times twelve, which gets us sixty plus three, which is sixty-three. So our answer is sixty three inches. Don't forget the units. Here you can see that we can split the mixed fractions when multiplying. Here's another thing. Let's look at the same question. What is five and a quarter feet in inches? We can also multiply improper fractions when the numerator is higher than the denominator. This is more complicated, but can be useful as well sometimes. So five and a quarter is equal to five times four plus one. So we, we multiply the denominator to the, make the whole number, and then we add the numerator of the one fourth, and we put that all over the denominator. So when we multiply and add everything, we get 21 over 4. Since we know that 12 inches are in a foot, 21 over 4 times 12 is equal to 252 over 4, which will be, get us 63 inches, the same as the one from before. Now please go over the worksheet, the rest of the worksheet. The worksheet is not long at all, and with your skills, you can probably do it in 5 to 10 minutes. I will put the answers below. You can pause the video here uh, to check your work. All right, thank you. The main goal today was to introduce and provide some practice for you on how to multiply fractions. I hope you learned something new and took away from this lesson. I know times are tough right now with the pandemic we are in, so I thank you for taking the time to take this lesson and be willing to learn. If you have any questions at all, please contact thisistask at gmail.com. My, my name is Daniel Yu, and if you want to contact me personally, if the above email does not work, my email is danielyuny at gmail.com.